Hi everyone, welcome back. This is part two of a two-part tutorial about creating game assets from the ground up. If you haven't watched part one, the link is on the screen. I use Inkscape in this tutorial, so if you need a quick intro on how Inkscape works, you can visit our blog in the video description below. In part one, we went over the first two and a half steps of my drawing workflow. Step one was searching the web for inspiration on the object you're trying to draw. This step is especially critical if you are new to drawing. The place more most beginners mess up is by trying to draw things from memory. Step two involves breaking down the image into its basic shapes. For the tractor we were drawing, our basic shapes were one rectangle for the body, two circles for the wheels, and two more rectangles for the exhaust pipe. Step three dives into adding some details to your original basic shapes by drawing inspiration from the original image. For our tractor, we altered the rectangular body to incorporate some curves and then we created some nice ridged wheels with hubcaps. And finally, we added a bl thick black outline to all the objects to give our tractor a nice cartoony feel. In part two, I'm going to continue with step four of my workflow, adding details. First, I add a sweet racing stripe to the side of our tractor and draw in the steering wheel. While doing so, I go over some of the intricacies of the Bezier tool, as well as some important path editing tools. Then, I bring our tractor to life by giving it some personality. Finally, we'll finish up our tractor with step 5, shadows and lighting. I define a light source and drop some shadows onto our tractor to add a little bit of depth. Let's dive right back in, shall we? Okay, first I want to do something about this massive blank red space. Let's add a racing stripe. I'm going to do this with the Bezier tool. This tool allows you to drop nodes onto your document and it will draw strokes between your nodes. You can press enter to stop drawing nodes, or you can click on your first node to close a shape. Hitting F2 will switch to the path editing cursor, which will allow you to move around your nodes and alter the curvature of these strokes. Another neat trick is that if you hold down the control key while clicking on a node, that node will smooth out. Now, to make our racing stripe, I'm going to drop two nodes down on our tractor that will define the start and end of the stripe. Then, with the path editing cursor, I changed the curvature of the stroke we just drew to match the top of the tracker. Once the curvature is finalized, we can go into the fill and stroke window, which you can open by hitting Control shift f if you don't have it open already. In the Stroke Style tab, we want to alter the width of the stroke to be a nice size. I use a width of 15. Eventually, I want the stroke paint to be white, but I'm going to set it to this bright green color so that we can see the overlap more clearly. Now, you could fiddle with the path ending so that we can make the stripe end right where the tractor outline begins, but that can get tedious. Instead, I'm going to convert this stroke into a path object so that we can use the tractor body itself to take the intersection, and then our stroke will be contained nicely within the tractor. The shortcut for converting a stroke to a path is Ctrl-Alt-C. You'll notice that I can easily alter the curvature of a stroke to keep the line width the same, but once I convert my stroke to a path object, it is now made up of nodes that have very different properties. Play around with it yourself to see what I mean. Taking the intersection of two path objects is just one of the many path tools included with Inkscape. The other options are Union, Difference, Exclusion, Division, and Cut Path, just to name a few. I go through what each of these do with a square and a circle, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. Now, I'm going to duplicate my tractor body with Control D. The body will essentially serve as a cookie cutter shape, cutting the shape beneath it to match. We're going to take the intersection, so select the tractor body and then click on the stripe while holding down the shift key to select both. Then, take the union of these two objects by hitting Control shift 8 Now, you'll notice that the stripe still overlaps with the tractor outline a little bit. That's because Inkscape draws the outline out in both directions from the edge of the object. To fix this, we can just switch to the regular cursor by hitting F1 and then just move the stripe over a little bit until it looks good. Then, switch the color of the stripe in the fill tab to white. I'm going to take this chance to do a little more fiddling with my tractor. I like to step back and make sure I'm happy with what I've drawn so far pretty often as I'm drawing, because it's a lot easier to do along the way than it is to change stuff all at the end. I'm going to put in the steering wheel next. To draw the steering wheel column, switch to the rectangle tool by hitting the R key, and draw a rectangle. Switch over to the regular cursor by hitting F1, and then with the rectangle selected, click on the rectangle again to show the rotation handles. Now using these rotation handles, we can rotate our rectangle. Notice that a little plus sign appears in the middle of our rectangle. This is the rotation center. We can move this little plus sign around 
so that we can rotate our objects with more precision around a rotation center of our choosing. Go ahead and angle the steering wheel column until you like how it looks. Next, we're going to round out the edges of this rectangle. The nice thing about the rectangle object in Inkscape is that we can resize the rectangle with one of the two square handles on the rectangle. And we can also alter the corners to be rounded off instead of sharp with a little circle handle. We'll go ahead and round off the steering wheel column. I'm going to draw the steering wheel with two Bezier curves. One will stick out of the steering wheel column, and the other will be the wheel itself. Switch to your Bezier tool by hitting the B key, and draw a straight line out from the steering wheel column. Now, go to the Stroke Style tab and change the width. I use a value of 8 here. I don't like how my stroke is so sharp in the corners, so I'm going to round off the edges with a round cap in the Stroke Style tab. To create the wheel, I'm just going to select the line we just drew with the select cursor by hitting F1 and clicking on the line. Then, I duplicate the line and rotate it by 90 degrees. There's a button that will rotate your objects by 90 degrees in the toolbar. Now, I switch back to the path editing cursor with F2 and just shrink the steering wheel a little bit. Great! This is basically our final tractor, but I want to use this tractor as a main element in my game, and for that, I don't think it draws enough attention to itself. So, let's bring the tractor to life by giving it some eyes. To do this, I draw a white circle and just give it the same outline as the rest of the objects in my drawing. For me, it has a width of 4. Then, I drill on a pupil with another circle. Now, I want to add some more expression. Let's take advantage of the tractor drill. I use the Bezier tool again to draw in two lines to make it look like a grill, but on the second line, I add a little bit of curvature to it. Aw, oh, look at that, a happy little tractor. But, our tractor's on a mission, so I'm going to make him mad. Let's flip that smile upside down by selecting it and hit the V key to flip it vertically. You may have to tweak the positioning after you do this. But now we just have a sad tractor. An eyelid will surely fix that. Let's duplicate the eyeball first. Then I'm going to use the Bezier tool again to draw a cookie cutter shape on top of the eyeball. Once I have the eyelid at a sufficiently angry angle, select the eyeball and the Bezier curve we just drew. Then use the Union tool again to get the final eyelid shape. Remember, the shortcut for this is Control shift 8 Change the color of this to red, and we're done. I'm going to take this moment again to move my shapes around and tweak my tractor again. Looking good. We're ready to move on to step 5, adding even more details. Namely, adding some shadows to give our tractor some depth. This is where you can look through your inspiration images again and see how other artists have given their work some depth with shadows and lighting. I'm going to define my light source as coming from the top right. This positioning will dictate how we draw shadows onto our tractor. Let's start off with the exhaust pipe. Since the sun is shining from the right, I'm going to draw a shadow on the left. Draw a rectangle to overlap the left half of your exhaust pipe, and then adjust the color of the rectangle to be a flat black, but also change the transparency to be about 10%. Feel free to move this rectangle around to get a feel for how the shadow will look once it's placed on the exhaust pipe. Now, once it's in a position you like, we're going to use the exhaust pipe as a cookie cutter shape to cut the shadow down to size. You could resize the shadow rectangle manually, but that's pretty time consuming. Select the larger exhaust pipe and then duplicate it. Then, while holding down the shift key, select the shadow. Now take the union of these two objects. Simple, right? I'll let you repeat this process for the second half of the exhaust pipe. Now, let's get a little more complicated. We're going to use two rectangles this time to drop an angular shadow on the steering wheel column. The concepts are pretty similar to what we did with the exhaust pipe, so just watch what I do and follow along. Let's move on to the eyes. In fact, all circular objects benefit from the same technique, so once we're done with the eyes, you'll be able to drop the same shadow onto both the hubcaps. Rather than drawing the shadow onto the eye like I did with the exhaust pipe, I'm going to draw a circular cookie cutter shape, and then define the shadow as the area that doesn't overlap with the cookie cutter shape. So, draw a circle to overlap most of the eye, leaving a small sliver of shadow on the bottom left corner of the eye. Then, duplicate the eyeball and move it underneath the circle we just drew by changing the draw order. We always want the cookie cutter object to be on top when we apply path effects. Take note of what happens if the eyeball is on top. Instead of performing a union like we've been doing so far, this time I'm going to take the difference of the two objects. 
Now, remove the outline from this new object and change the fill color to a flat black with some transparency. I'll let you either repeat the same process with the two hubcaps, or duplicate the shadow and simply resize them to fit the other two hubcaps. I take the latter route in the video. Now that the circles are done, we can actually reuse the circular shadow to apply to the wheels as well. Hopefully by now, you're getting used to using objects as cookie cutter shapes. We're going to resize this hubcap shadow to fit the wheels, and then duplicate the wheels on top of the shadow to cut them to fit, similar to what we did for the shadows on the exhaust pipe. One time saving trick to note is, when you're resizing the hubcap shadow to fit the tire, holding down the control and shift keys while you resize will expand the shadow uniformly out from the center, so you can stop resizing at the edge of the wheel. Go ahead and do this for both wheels. Alright, the last thing we're going to do is add a shadow to the tractor body itself. I'm just going to let you watch and follow along. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something from this tutorial, and if you've been following along, I hope you've made something you're proud of. If you did end up following along, leave your creation in the comments. I'd love to see what you've drawn. If you got lost at any point along the way during this video, leave me a comment and I'll try to answer your question. Alternatively, you can contact us through our contact page on the website. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and if you enjoyed our video, please click the like button below. Be sure to check out calinteractive.com to download our free games and find more tutorials like this one.